Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to go over how to use your Helix and to get up to four inputs and outputs to process up to four separate signals. So you can process your guitar, you can process a bass, vocals, and backing tracks or keyboards or whatever you would like, but you can get four different inputs and four different outputs and use the Helix to process four different signals. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. So this is definitely a bit more advanced of a Helix programming. I do have a beginner's guide to using the Helix. If you're brand new to Helix, I'd recommend watching that one first because this is going to go a little bit over your head and then come back and watch this video. Also, you will be able to do this on the Helix LT, but the Helix LT has less ins and outs, and I'm going to go over that in this video. So with the Helix Floor, the full one, you'll be able to do more of this. With the Helix LT, you might run out of inputs and outputs, but we'll still go over and see if it'll work for you you. If you don't need to use four ins and outs, you might be okay. But before we get started, I post videos like this all the time, stuff on Helix, HX Stomp, wireless in-ear monitors, MIDI programming, stuff like that. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when I put out new videos. And hitting the thumbs up button is a free way to support the channel. Also, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram at Scott Ewell Music. Also, last week I did a giveaway for this wireless XLR system. So I will be doing the drawing for the winner for that in this video. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what I've done is I've loaded up just a blank preset right here just to show you how this works. But basically you have, you know, your input here and your output here. So you have one two lines right here. So this is one input, this is the input, and this is the output, and you put, you know, all of your pedals and amps and whatever you want in here, and so on and so forth. Now this is really goofy, is that the only way that I know how to get four instead of just the two right here is, so let me just clear everything out, you have to add a block, so it, it can be whatever for right now, um, does not matter. So what you have to do is you hit this action button and you move it down and that puts it into a secondary path. So, you know, if I want the signal to go through and hit two separate compressors separately and then come together at the end, that's what this does. But if you go to the split point right here, you hit action and you bring that down. Now you have a second input. And if you go over to here to the connecting point, Right there, hit action, bring it down. Now you have a second output. I don't know why they made it complicated like that, but that's the only way that I know how to do this. If you know of another way to do it, let me know. So I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Hit action, bring it down, go to that split point, hit action, bring it down, go to this connecting point right here, action, bring it down. Now you have four inputs and four outputs. Input one, output one, input two, output two, three, and four. But what are our inputs and our output? What are the options that we have for that? So since we're going to be going over the ins and outs and multiple configurations, it's important to know what inputs and output options you have. So I'm going to look on the back of this is for the Helix and this is for the Helix LT. If you do have the Helix rack, this that'll be the same as the Helix floor, but the Helix LT does have less inputs and outputs, but I'm going to cover them really quick. So for the Helix, you have, for inputs, you have the guitar in, you also have an aux in, you also have a mic in. Then here you see these four send and return ports. The return ports act as an input. So you can have return one be one, return two be another input, three and four. Or you could do it in stereo if you would like and patch them together. So return one and two could be a stereo and then return three and four could also be a stereo. You also do have the option for a Variax input if you do use a Variax guitar. There is the digital one if you do use either of these, but that's a little bit more advanced. I don't think many people will be using that. And you do also have a USB input right here. So if you are getting a signal from like a laptop or something like that, anything that sends audio over USB, that does act as an input and an output. So keep that in mind. On the Helix LT, you have far less options. For inputs, you only have the guitar in, and then you have return one and two. As far as just quarter inch inputs, that's all you get. You do have a Variax input if you do want to use that. You can see the digital is only the output. However, you do still get the USB input and output. All right, so for outputs on both of them, you have XLR out and quarter inch out, and you get left and right for stereo if you'd like. On the Helix floor, you have four sends. So send one, send two, send three, and send four act as an output. On the Helix LT, you only get two, send one and two. And again, you also do have that digital out option. And of course, you do have USB out as well. So it's just important to know what your inputs and outputs are before we started doing this. 
Okay, so now that you know what the options are for your inputs and outputs, what you can do is you can start setting them over here in the inputs. So let's go over the inputs first. So first of all, most of the time it's set to multi-input, you know, so that's just basically anything, uh, the guitar, the aux, or a variax input. Also, just FYI, quick note, there is an input gate right at the very beginning of every input. I do recommend turning that on. That is really cool. But what you can do is you can start either twisting the knob and you'll see it change down here. So now only what's going into the guitar will be processed through this. Only what's going in the aux will be processed here. Only what's going in through the variax. You can scroll through them that way or you can push the button and you can see all the options that you have right here. So do you want it to come from multiple inputs, just guitar, just aux, just variax, the microphone input, return one or two or three or four, or stereo, return one and two and three and four. So if you're doing like backing tracks or something like that. The SPDIF is, can be grayed out if you have too many, um, but again, that's not something that most people I think will be using. And you do have USB three, four, five, six, and seven and eight. And I'm gonna address USB here towards the end. I'm gonna address that here at the end, but you do have options for USB three and four, five and six, and seven and eight right here. So let's say for this one, I want it to just be guitar. And it's just gonna be the guitar processing. And then all my guitar processing is gonna be here. Does not matter. I'm not doing a demo of like tones and stuff like that. But you know, I'm just giving you an idea of this is my guitar signal. And then what I want to do is for the output, I'm going to choose where I want to send the signal to. So this one is currently sent to send out everything. It's going to send out quarter inch, it's going to send out XLR, it's going to send out digital and out USB one and two. So again, I can either scroll through and change it. Now path 2A and 2B and stuff like that. What that means is that the signal will go through here and you see this arrow it'll drop down and it'll go into here. So the path will go here. And if I, you know, if I had too many blocks and I'm out of blocks and I wanted to process through here as well, I would set that to path 2A. But that's not what we're doing in this video. And here's going down to path 2B. Here's path 2A and 2B if you want to. But again, that's not really what we're doing. So the guitar will only now go out the quarter inch outputs or it'll only go XLR out if I'm trying to send it to, you know, front of house and using it as a direct rig, which is how I use it. Or you can push the button and you can manually choose these yourselves. Do note that the sends are only in stereo in this one. It's the only option. You don't get an option to send just one or send just two. It's only stereo. So for this one, I'm going to send it out quarter inch. So now the input for this one is going to go into the guitar. I'm gonna plug my guitar into the guitar in on the Helix. It's gonna go through all this processing, my compressor, my amp, my delay and my reverb, and it's gonna go out the quarter inch out. If you do want to pan it, you can do that here. Pushing the button also resets it. And if you do need to boost the level or cut the level, you can do that there as well. So now on this next one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to microphone input. So now I'm gonna use this as a vocal processor. I'm gonna plug my microphone into the mic input. It's gonna hit a compressor and it's gonna hit some reverb and I don't know, some delay. That's what we're gonna do for this one. And you might notice that you know, you're know you starting to run out of blocks because you know if you use too many blocks on one and two, you'll run out of DSP, that's just the way that it works. And then I'm gonna send that out to XLR out. So now guitar goes in through the guitar, out the quarter inch. Vocals go in through the mic input and out the XLR. Now down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have backing tracks or a keyboard. Let's say a keyboard. I'm gonna go into the aux input and then they have keyboard effects. Let's just do some EQ, a little bit of modulation or something like that. And then where do I wanna send that out to? A keyboard, I'm gonna send it out one and two. So now it's gonna go in through the aux, or actually what I could do, you know, if I really wanted to do it in stereo, I can do send it into the return one and two, and now it's going to go out send one and two. And then finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use USB three and four, because what I'm doing is I'm getting backing tracks from a laptop, because this Helix is awesome and it works over USB. You have USB in and you have USB out. So you can actually record direct and you can get audio sent directly to and from the Helix over USB, which is awesome. So this is for backing tracks. So on this one, you know, I don't actually need any processing because I don't, well, I actually just realized this. So if what happens, if I clear this block and I have nothing on this block, it erases it which again is really silly. So I'm gonna reset this back up again. So if I tried to move this back up to the top, 
it deletes the block. So what you have to do is what I would just do is I just put something like go to volume and just do gain and leave it at zero. And then that's literally doing nothing. It's just there to keep the block really, really silly, but that's how it works. I'm gonna set that back to USB three and four. And I'm going to send that one out, I can do I can do send three and four to do something completely different. Or, you know, if I want it to just go out the same output as you know, my guitar or something like that, or the vocals or something like that, I can still set it to XLR if I'm trying to send the signals to the same spot. So you know, you can have all of these going out the same spot, I can put all of these to output quarter inch, if I wanted to. Now they're all coming out the quarter inch output and I could control the volume here. So this is my backing tracks. If the backing tracks are way too loud, I can turn them down right here. This is the keyboard. The keyboard needs to be boosted. I could do that here. Vocals need to come down so on and so forth, but they're all going out a quarter inch right there. Or again, I can send them out separate. So they're all going out separately. So to review, this is my guitar, goes into the guitar input, goes through all these blocks and goes out the quarter inch. My vocals go into microphone input, go through all of this processing, and go out the XLR output. My keyboard is going, is going into return one and two, going through this processing, and going out send one and two. And then my backing tracks that I play to are coming, coming in on USB three and four, and going out send three and four. And that's how you can process up to four signals with four separate inputs and outputs using the helix. Okay, so as far as with USB, you can look this up in the manual if you want to find out more info. But USB one and two input and output are automatically going to process through the helix. They word it really well in the manual. Helix also receives input from USB one and two, but it's dedicated to monitoring audio from your computer or iPhone or tablet by bypassing all processing blocks. As such, it's not available as an input block source. So it's not actually going to go through the processing and all your effects like that. It's just going to go in to the helix. Okay, I didn't do a very good job explaining that. So I'm going to show you what I did. So this is USB that's plugged into my iPad right now. And it's going to send out out USB one and two just by default. Now, if you look here, it does not matter what my outputs or my inputs are. None of them are set to multi, they're actually just set to either none, or let me set this just to guitar as well. All the outputs you can see are set to go to quarter inch out. So it does not matter. But what I did is I plugged in XLR out and I'm sending that just over here to my audio interface. So now when I push play, you can hear the song. I'm going to set this this first input to multi input. So this is supposed everything's supposed to go in through here, you know, and I'm going to put you know, here's a modulation with the intensity all the way up. Here's a del here's a reverb with the mix all the way up. Here's a filter, you know, just random stuff on here that you think would make the music sound weird. Bypass all the effects. It's not changing the sound of it at all. It's not changing anything. So USB one and two by default just goes in here and goes out and it skips all of the processing. So it's good for listening to like backing tracks off of like YouTube or something like that. Okay, well, our thing, so I was checking this out. So I unplugged the XLR and I went out quarter inch. And as the music's playing, I'm like, I don't hear anything. So I don't know what's going on. So go to your global settings, hit the three button up here, go to global settings, and then you go to the ins and outs. And you see this USB in one and two destination. Now I set it to quarter inch. And now you can hear the music coming out quarter inch. So you can set it to multiple outputs, just quarter inch or just XLR. And if you do need to adjust the volume, you can do that right here. Make sense? That's how you use USB one and two. But if you need more control over it, if you want more control over the routing, you can set it to USB three and four, five or six or seven and eight. And you can do that with other more advanced ways. Okay, but I'm going to show you just like in Ableton. So if I, you know, if I had like backing tracks here or something like that, and I wanted to send that out, I've plugged in my Helix over USB, and I'm going to say I'm going to configure the output, and I'm going to say you know the input and the output is going to be through the Helix audio to 
to an output and where am I going to send it? Am I going to send it out USB 1 and 2, USB 3 and 4, USB 5 and 6, USB 7 and 8, or individually? So if I just want to send it out USB 3 and 4, because if you remember on our Helix, we sent that bottom one to set the input to USB 3 and 4. So now all the backing tracks that I play out of here are going to go into USB 3 and 4. Makes sense. But now say here I wanted to, you know, record audio, but I'm going to set that to get audio from USB 3 and 4. Or actually, let's do this USB 5 and 6. So whatever is coming from my computer in this file right here will go out of Ableton and into USB 3 and 4 on the Helix, which again, the Helix is processing right there. This is input 3 and 4. Now say if I did want, you know, my keyboards to go out USB 5 and 6 and go process into my computer, that is now going to go into Ableton into here, and that is going to come in from USB 5 and 6. So basically, if you want to send audio out of a DAW like Ableton over USB, you do the audio out, and I have set it to send out on USB 3 and 4. If I would like to send audio in from the Helix, I say that I want to record in from USB 5 and 6. That gives you more control than just the default USB 1 and 2 that the Helix is set up for automatically. Okay, so that's basically it. So I hope that helped you guys out. So I'm assuming if you guys made it to the end of this video, Video with all that info you found this helpful if you can just do me a favor hit the thumbs up button it's a free way to support the channel it really actually does help i know it's annoying how much youtubers ask for it but it truly does help feed the algorithm and stuff like that so i'd really appreciate it because it takes forever to put these videos together leave a comment down below let me know how you plan to use this i'm definitely curious on your routing and your signal flow for your helix to do something a little bit more advanced like this Okay, but before we wrap up, I am going to do the drawing for this free wireless XLR system from last week's video. So here we go. No replies and do not allow duplicates. Let's see who the winner is. 56 comments. Hey, you were the runner up in one of the videos previously. So perfect. I'm glad that you actually won this one. So TSTU 1701. Thanks for the video. Definitely use the wireless unit for remote PA powered speaker. This would actually work really great. Um, I know you watch a lot of my videos, so I'm actually not gonna pick a runner up for this one because I know you're gonna reach out to me. So congratulations and uh, get in touch with me and I'll get that sent out to you. Thank you guys for entering and I'll be doing some more contests in the upcoming videos, so be sure to subscribe. Thanks guys. Thank you guys again for watching. I have a ton of other Helix and HX Stomp videos, so I have a whole playlist of them going over global settings, MIDI programming with it, command center, basic programming, snapshots, tons of different tips and tricks. So be sure to check out some of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Yule Music on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, leave a comment down below on how you plan to use this. I'm definitely curious. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you next time.